Deep within the Earth's crust, a primal force slumbers. A supervolcano, a behemoth capable of reshaping continents and altering life, rests, awaiting its cataclysmic awakening. Another force has emerged from the heart of atoms, the nuclear bomb. Since their creation, nuclear weapons have cast a long shadow over humanity. But what would happen if these two titans, one natural and one man-made, were to collide? The very thought seems inconceivable. Yet it is a question that haunts our collective imagination, a morbid curiosity about the ultimate showdown between nature's raw power and humanity's destructive ingenuity. The answer, as we shall see, is a complex tapestry woven from the threads of geology, physics, and the delicate balance of our planet's intricate systems. To comprehend the potential consequences of such an encounter, we must first delve into the heart of these titans. Supervolcanoes, unlike their smaller cousins, are defined by the immense volume of magma they can unleash, eruptions exceeding 1,000 cubic kilometers of volcanic material. The Yellowstone Caldera, a slumbering giant beneath Yellowstone National Park, serves as a stark reminder of the awesome power these geological behemoths possess. Its last super-eruption, some 640,000 years ago, ejected an estimated 1,000 cubic kilometers of ash and rock into the atmosphere. Nuclear weapons derive their power from the atom itself. Through nuclear fission, the nucleus of an atom is split, releasing an unimaginable amount of energy. The bomb that leveled Hiroshima, a mere 15 kilotons, unleashed a wave of destruction that shocked the world. Modern thermonuclear weapons, far more powerful, have yields in the megaton range, capable of obliterating entire cities. The destructive potential of these weapons is a chilling testament to our capacity for both innovation and annihilation. Imagine a hypothetical scenario. A nuclear weapon is detonated directly above the caldera of a supervolcano. The initial explosion would vaporize everything within a radius of several kilometers, creating a massive crater. The shockwave would race outward at supersonic speeds, flattening forests and creating seismic waves. Buildings would crumble, bridges would collapse, and the landscape would be reshaped in an instant. But the true horror lies not in the initial blast, but in what follows. The immense heat and pressure generated by the nuclear explosion would act as a catalyst, triggering the slumbering giant beneath. Molten rock, superheated gas, and volcanic ash would be ejected into the atmosphere with unimaginable force, creating an eruption of unprecedented scale and fury. The interaction between the nuclear blast and the volcanic system is where this scenario becomes truly terrifying. The intense heat from the explosion would vaporize rock, creating a massive pocket of superheated gas within the volcano's magma chamber. This would cause the pressure inside the chamber to skyrocket, potentially triggering a catastrophic eruption far larger than the initial blast. Imagine a colossal column of ash, rock, and superheated gas, driven by the combined fury of a nuclear detonation and a volcanic eruption rising miles into the atmosphere. This ultra-eruption would dwarf anything in recorded history, a testament to the destructive synergy of these two forces. The nuclear explosion would act as a catalyst, igniting the volcanic inferno. The immediate aftermath, as devastating as it would be, is only the beginning of the story. The true global consequences would unfold in the days, weeks, and years to come as the Earth's atmosphere, oceans, and climate systems reel from the impact. In the immediate aftermath of the eruption, the surrounding region would be transformed into a hellscape. Pyroclastic flows, superheated avalanches of gas and ash, would engulf everything in their path, incinerating forests and burying towns. The air would be thick with toxic gases, making breathing a struggle for any living thing that survived the initial blast. Further afield, the sky would darken as the massive plume of ash and sulfur dioxide spreads across the globe. This ash cloud would block out the sun, causing temperatures to plummet and plunging the planet into a state of perpetual twilight. The ash itself would pose a significant threat to human health, causing respiratory problems, damaging crops, and contaminating water supplies. The geological aftershocks of the eruption would be equally devastating. The massive release of pressure from the volcano's magma chamber could trigger a cascade of earthquakes and aftershocks, further destabilizing the region. Landslides and mud flows, triggered by the heavy ash fall and potential rainfall, would reshape the landscape, burying towns and villages under tons of debris. 
The eruption itself could alter the volcano's plumbing system, potentially creating new vents and fissures in the Earth's crust. These new vents could release additional volcanic gases and ash, prolonging the environmental crisis. The sheer scale of the eruption would leave an indelible mark on the planet's surface, a scar visible from space. The once familiar landscapes would be transformed into alien terrains, their contours reshaped by the violence of the eruption. The Earth would bear the wounds of this cataclysmic event for centuries to come. The eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815, a relatively small eruption compared to our hypothetical scenario, caused widespread crop failures, famine and disease, leading to what became known as the year without a summer. Beyond the immediate physical destruction, the eruption's most far-reaching effects would be atmospheric. The massive injection of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere would react with water vapor to form sulfate aerosols, tiny particles that reflect sunlight back into space. This would have a profound cooling effect on the planet, potentially triggering a volcanic winter that could last for years or even decades. The cooling effect of these aerosols would be felt globally, disrupting weather patterns, altering agricultural seasons, and causing widespread crop failures. The sulfur dioxide would also contribute to acid rain, which would damage crops, forests, and aquatic ecosystems. The delicate web of life, already under stress from pollution and climate change, would be pushed further towards the brink. The combined effects of darkness, ashfall, and global cooling would have a devastating impact on agriculture. Crops would fail, livestock would perish, and famine would spread across the globe. The delicate balance of food production and distribution, already strained by a growing population, would collapse, leading to widespread food shortages and social unrest. The global economy, already fragile, would be plunged into chaos. Supply chains would be disrupted, trade would grind to a halt, and financial markets would collapse. The interconnectedness of the modern world, once a source of prosperity, would become a liability, as the ripple effects of the disaster spread through the global economy. Mass migrations driven by famine, disease, and social unrest would test the limits of national borders and international cooperation. The fabric of society, already strained by economic inequality and political polarization, could unravel in the face of such a cataclysmic event. The eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815 provides a sobering glimpse into the potential social and political consequences of a volcanic winter. The environmental, social, and economic consequences of detonating a nuclear weapon on a supervolcano would be truly global in scope. No corner of the world would be spared from the fallout, as the ash cloud spreads, temperatures plummet, and the delicate balance of the Earth's systems is thrown into disarray. The interconnectedness of our world, once a source of strength, would become a liability, as the effects of the disaster cascade through the global system. It would highlight the need for international cooperation, scientific advancement, and a renewed focus on sustainability and resilience in the face of global challenges. The survival of our species, once thought assured, would hang in the balance. The detonation of a nuclear weapon on a supervolcano would be a disaster of unprecedented scale, a global catastrophe that would reshape the world as we know it. The hypothetical scenario we have explored serves as a stark reminder of the awesome power of the natural world and the potential consequences of our actions. It underscores the importance of understanding these forces, respecting their power, and working to mitigate the risks they pose. By understanding the mechanics of supervolcanoes, we can better monitor their activity, develop early warning systems, and prepare for the possibility of a future eruption. By studying the effects of nuclear weapons, we can work towards their elimination, preventing the possibility of such a catastrophic scenario from ever becoming a reality. Knowledge in this context is not just power, it is our best hope for survival. The fate of humanity may very well depend on our ability to learn from the past, prepare for the future, and act with wisdom and restraint in the present. In the end, the story of the supervolcano and the nuclear bomb is not just a tale of destruction, but also a story about humanity's role as stewards of our planet. It is a reminder of the immense power we possess, both for creation and destruction, and the responsibility that comes with it. The choices we make today, as individuals, as nations, and as a global community, will determine the course of our future. 
we have the capacity to unlock the secrets of the universe, to harness the power of the atom, and to comprehend the awesome forces that shape our planet. But with this knowledge comes a profound responsibility, a moral imperative to use our power wisely and to protect the fragile web of life that sustains us. The future of our species and indeed of all life on Earth may very well depend on our ability to meet this challenge. The choice is ours. We can choose a path of knowledge, responsibility, and collective action. The time to choose is now, while we still have the chance. The fate of the Earth, and of all who call it home, hangs in the balance.